have the ball first in the white jerseys. And the reception and the catch by Kate Robinson. They got after it pretty early here. They had to, we had to we had to we had to yell at them a little bit to Yeah, they stuff. were excited. They, they were excited, chomping at the bit to get out there and play. <laughs> it's been a, been a, a long but uh, tedious couple of days for these two teams making the transition to the West Coast to play, and a nice job on the reception there by Tammy Jerson. This will we're going to see a showcase of seven on seven. You're going to see a lot of passing. You can rush the quarterback, but you have one blocker. It's it's uh, it makes for very interesting and gets that ball out quick. Absolutely, and a quick place. There's no huddles, no huddle offense. Working from a snap. A little shotgun action is a, a consistent move. Nice little lateral there. Good movement as Adriana Williams picks up a few more yards. Everybody is eligible, so it doesn't matter who snaps the ball, where they come from. Everybody is eligible to catch the football. Spano here puts a perfect pass and then watch the lateral. Practice that a little bit. Adriana Williams with plenty of speed. 23 in white for the Knights. Checking the sidelines for the call of the play by Coach Saunders and his team. Quick again, rolling out is Spano. Nice little pick up there. What's so impressive? Martinez. Yeah, what's so impressive with these girls is how well they catch with their hands. That always bothered me so much when wide receivers let the ball get into their body. These girls do a tremendous job of using their hands to grab the ball because they're doing it away from their body and defenders are right on them. They're still making the catch. Catching, cushioning it in, Ryan, or just keeping it? Just using out. their hands, just squeeze it, and they do a great job. Their hands are a big catch radius for these girls. Bella Rodriguez, the center. As Spanner rolls out, nice job once again as Williams with a gain maybe of one on the play. It's a great play by Soki. Do on, on the tackle for no gain. Long pass to the outside, good coverage by Alonzo Lewis on the play, as well as Klaus. Hayden Spano, the quarterback, is only a sophomore. I, coach used the word terrified when they found out they were part of this game. Uh, he said it in a joking manner, but uh, she's incredibly competitive, and she was really looking forward to this competition against a team she knows very well. She she has that uh, demeanor almost like a, a poker player. You know, very straight face, which I guess you want back there. She scrambles now under pressure as Boney is there. Nice job on the reception as Robinson. She'll carry it in for the touchdown, and Robinson is on the board first. It's probably one of those broken plays. Probably wasn't set up that way. But Robinson crossing the field a lot of times was, as a coach, you're told not to throw back against your body. Watch as she scrambles out, she's getting chased down. Way to set up and get the throw across your body. Going the opposite direction to every defender, and she outraces everybody to the end zone for the first score of this historic game. There was some confidence to the young QB. Yeah, it will. She's down the field. Coach talked about how she just, one thing she really does is struggle with struggling, right? I mean, you have to learn how to deal with failure in your way. Uh, and grow from it, and that was a perfect example of making a bad throw play before and then picking up a touchdown the next play. Looking for the duo once again, and Robinson incomplete on the play, so 6-0. Is it, now Alonzo actually won the toss, they deferred, put, hoping I guess maybe to put a little bit of pressure on Spano on that play on that first series down the field. Well, you always, you know, you, as a coach, you always want to put your team on the defensive out there so you can do something. Uh, and then you understand what you have to do after that. Uh, the response, of course, is offensively go out and make a big play, and that's exactly what Robinson was able to do, get on the board. So be the first series for the Ravens of Alonzo. And they go deep oh. and just out of the outstretched arms of McKenna Sturgis. I talked to you guys about how Mika Rowe can throw it, right? I was out on the field out there. Just outside her hands, just enough. Keep the ball in play. She's got, everybody's got a little nerves, a little hyped up, but she was spinning it before practice or before the game today, and she was really excited for this opportunity. Number 
Mika Rowe now. Second down, and it's Sturgis over the middle for the reception. Lee, I can't tell you how great these receivers, you watch her reach out and grab this with her hands. I mean, just look at that catch radius. I mean, that's what you want from any wide receiver if you're a quarterback, is you can kind of throw it all over the map and they'll go up and get it. Tough catch over the middle. They went back to Sergis for a second time. Rowe going long over the middle once again. And the reception by Klaus. Is Klaus somehow, the senior, grabs that one in. That is the vulnerable part in any cover two, especially Tampa two. Eric Vance, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, started out coaching this flag football team before passing it off to Josh Sanders. And so when they play this Tampa two, if they can get over the top of that first linebacker just like that, that's the vulnerable spot for this Alon uh, Alonzo team. Rowe, with some time, goes short this time. Sandy Bodie looking for some room, and a nice job by Jerson. Grabbing the flag. The one thing the coaches told us this week when we talked to them that, that we see is just how competitive and how athletic they are. Watch this. She grabs the ball and immediately gets north and south, avoids a tackle, gets up the sideline, and picks up a few more yards. Matt Hernandez in his 15th season, getting ready to call a play there. 15 years. 15 years. He loves to talk about a coach that just loves this sport. Went to FSU, played a club, and had an opportunity to get into teaching in an odd way, he said, and uh, found his way to Alonzo High School where he teaches and also coaches. Never played any football, but played intramural football while at FSU, and then when he once he got out, he started refereeing these games for about 40 bucks a game. He said that's more money than I was making doing anything else. And he got into the coaching aspect and has really taken off. He's won two state championships in 18 and 19, uh, looking for his third this season. Rowe goes short. Sadie Boating, and the flag is grabbed there. Nice job by Bella Rodriguez to grab the flag. He, you know, in talking to Coach Hernandez, we had an opportunity to go go up to school and, and see them practice. He's that that teacher that everyone wants to be in their classroom in between classes. Big big computer lab uh, that he is teaching from, and uh, of course it has a bevy of all their championship trophies and everything in there. And, that's where the student athletes spend a lot of their time when not in class. Julia Sanchez, with a short catch over the middle. Understanding down and distance, right? It, it's incredibly important for any quarterback. Right there was a perfect example, right? Getting near the first down marker, they're going to be a fourth down and what? Just about one. About one here? Yeah, long one. They don't run the ball that often, but this may be a time we may see it just to get a quick first down. Going to the outside to Bodie. She's got some room to run. Great job and athleticism. Tipping and towing down the uh, sidelines there. That's, a little narrower field to work with. That is a perfect example of the run pass option, right? You know, you don't see Mets run, but when you put a dual threat with the quarterback there, you, you have to commit to one player. That's exactly what they got the defense to do, and she puts it right on the money to get them a big first down inside the red zone. Alonzo trying to match Robinson's first run on their first possession. Short snap, Bodie! Bodie on the carry. And met by the double team. Guillermo was there, VJ was there. As you guys can see with these flags, right, they don't rip off as the flag does. The whole belt comes off, which allows for players not to worry about injuries, getting pulled down, down to the ground or anything. They come right off, the whole belt does upon the tackle. Clock running here as we are just about 20 seconds to go in this very fast paced first quarter of play. Bodie trying to cut back to the inside and no way is Hayden Spano is there to grab the flag. Tried a little trick with you there, a little motion to the other side, maybe a little misdirection, but uh, Spano wasn't fooled by it at all. 
very, very special. And uh, to be able to walk into that locker room, some of them just awestruck. Absolutely. I mean, as is this opportunity special, you said it right. And when we talked to the coaches this week, we asked them, what message do you want conveyed through this opportunity? And Coach Saunders said, you really don't know how impressive this sport is until you get into it. He said, I would encourage other associations, other schools, do it and do it right and people will flock. He said, it's been so rewarding to see the growth of the sport specifically in Florida and their hope is that it will expand throughout the country. You know, Taylor, to, to add to that a little bit, I think, you know, talking, we had the opportunity to talk to some of the parents that are here over the last few days, and they were telling us how they felt that, um, you know, their daughters have just grown a little bit more confidence being able to play a sport and be successful and be, being the known football team around campus and school. Robinson gets a stop there, so no points on the board, and that sends the offense back on the field for another long drive, hopefully. So a big break for the Robinson team, doing a nice job defensively. They take over on downs here in the second quarter play, so a nice stop. They got the defensive help the offense here and the offense moving once again for Robinson is Bella Rodriguez. I am incredibly impressed with the accuracy from Hayden Spano. I mean, she has been right on the money, hitting receivers in stride, kind of just carving up this cover three defense that Matt Hernandez and the Alonzo defense is trying to play. They are, they are lost for how to defend this young sophomore quarterback right now. First down for the Knights. Spanner rolling once again. Under pressure and the flag, big flag picked up by Elabody on the rush. The real trait for the athleticism of these young girls, right, is their ability to break down and make these kind of tackles. I mean, this is the best form tackling that you can have because it's all about breaking down and getting to their waist. You're not trying to knock somebody out. You're not trying to blow right through them. It's really impressive. They go with the short snap and a nice job. Is Williams once again. A little deception. We expected both of these teams, since they know each other well, to throw a little bit of mix into the pot. Third down now. Yeah, these coaching staffs are really close, right? right. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're best friends, actually. Totally, and uh, actually there was a hurricane here at fourth down, they, or third down, they're going long here, outstretched arms, and a nice job! Katelli Williams with the reception there deep for the first down. What a throw! She is impressive. The young sophomore, look at this! Just puts it right on the money on the outstretched arms. Can't get beat deep. Terrified. I don't know if that's the word. I'd say terrific right now. Spano has Williams there on the pitch. Cuts back inside. She keeps going. It turned nothing into something. Get a little, about five. A little instant replay there, whether yeah. that flag was pulled before the toss, I don't know. Coach Matt Hernandez wants a, he figures if it's at Nike here, we should have a replay booth somewhere. <laughs> Maybe Bo can stick his head in the, in the vault and tell us if it was or not. Bo Jackson on the sidelines this afternoon for this big day for girls high school flag football and the boys will be coming up a little bit later on as Spano goes to Williams in the corner. Incomplete. St. Augustine out of New Orleans, Louisiana will be taking on DeSoto, Texas. And the boys tackle football matchup coming up following this game on the NFL Network. I think both sides are happy there was an incomplete pass. The pace that we had there in that first quarter. Take a little breather. <laughs> Running clock, of course, so it, it, it's going to fly by in a hurry, but. Spano, and over the middle. 
Nice job there by MJ to catch it. Out of that slot position. Set up another fourth down here. See if Alonzo can tighten up, keep him out of the end zone, and try to return the favor. Fourth down. Alonzo's defense really needs this stop as Robinson has dictated the offensive flow thus far in this game. Rodriguez with the snap. Spano, tip ball, and nearly picked off by Sovidal. Great defense, got right up on her, didn't allow for any kind of uh, uh, separation there to, to get him another fourth down stop. Just a little payback there by their well-known opponent and see what Mika and this offense can do before halftime here. Three minutes and 20 seconds on a running clock here. Let's see if they can get some points on the board before halftime. Roll, rolling, little short pass, a nice job and quick movements to Lewis on the reception. We think the day is hot here in Oregon right now uh, for Alonzo and Robinson. School just started about. Uh, 10 to 15 days ago, and these two teams are known to get up at 6.15 in the morning to start their practices. We've still got high school boys football practicing at the same time. Everybody trying to utilize the same field, so they get it in before school starts. Yes, they do, and you know, they play their season during the spring. You know, what they do now most is around club and practicing. And you can tell, like, you know, th this isn't a team that's rusty at all from their spring season a little while ago. They are, they're firing on all cylinders. Third down, row to the outside, and Sturgis. I don't know if you notice this, Leah, but the ball hasn't touched the ground much no, at all. Hasn't. If it does touch the ground, it's a dead ball, and of course, with incompletions, but if it's a, a toss or a fumble or anything, the ball is dead. But, I mean, the ball has not hit the ground hardly at all. It's incredibly impressive. Good hands by both teams, McKenna Sturgis. Out wide, 28 in blue. As they go over the middle and nearly picked off. Right there's just a, a, a situation where you're assuming what that cover two, Tampa two is going to look like. And she, instead of really reading the progression, she just kind of tried to throw it to an area. Great defensive play to knock the ball down. Robinson, of course, would have loved to have an interception there to try to get a score before half. Big play here, second and 15. Kimmy Sai with that break up there. Long play for Rowe. Will she go to Sturgis? No, she goes short. Bodie. Still moving. But it won't be enough to get to the 40, which will be with that first down marker. Timeout taken by Matt Hernandez. Good rush, way to find the outlet. Any quarterback has to have that safety net once you get into trouble. And, not, and then not to just assume the flag comes off when you're breaking through a couple tackles there. Uh, almost picked up the first down. Sets up for a third down with the 20. Well, the clock's running here, so our, our clock guy needs to, needs to take, a, take a spell here. I can't see the scoreboard from here. But I can't tell if that clock has got it right or not. It says 12 seconds on it as well. They're going to readjust. Tell them to the add. Clock. Yeah, they need to add 20, at least 20 seconds. At least. So the key here for Alonzo is to get to that midfield. We could add, put 43 seconds on the clock. Bonos. Bonos, he boasts, hey, it's 43. 
It really is. You actually said it's 34. 34, yeah. I think, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. So they add a little bit more. 48 seconds now. Row. And a nice job over the middle is Sanchez for the catch. Good first and down pickup. Absolutely. Now they got to roll though, right? 37, 36. Clock's ticking away. They got to be ready to go here. Speed it up a little bit. Got to get this one for some confidence. Trailing 6 0. Robinson held them on their first series. Oh, and nearly picked off. But a great job on the play and holding up and Coach Hernandez wants a timeout. What a catch. Look at this. The ball goes right in through the arms of the Robertson defender and pulled away by 26. What a play. Nunaziata with the grab. The junior has been playing varsity flag. She also plays lacrosse as well. And many of these players, dual sport athletes, which we are seeing more and more once the uh, teams get to the college level. Coaches like that. They like the versatility of having a two or three sport athlete from high school. That was always the case. You know, for me growing up, it was football season to basketball season uh, to to baseball season and track and field. It was just, you know, you just, that's the way it was. And you never got burnt out by doing one thing for so long. Did you like the break a little bit too? Bodie here with the reception. I didn't even think about it, right? It just was, it was just, it was basketball season. Right. This is what we do next. So I was never not active. And I think it really helped me in terms of my athletic ability when I got to the next level. I think you see players now that get burnt out because they've been doing it all they've, their whole life, right? They just focused on baseball and stuff like that, or, or or football. When you have other things, it helps with the, you know, your your flexibility, your right. mobility. All of those things play a big part in all this. And these girls, they get the opportunity to play volleyball, to play lacrosse, um, and, and add flag football to the mix. I mean, the athleticism of these these young women are are is what's so impressive. I I think that might be my biggest takeaway, and it was something that the coaches wanted us to know that they were going to be and showcase how athletic they were, and they certainly have so far in the first half for everybody to see. The athleticism is certainly there. Julia Sanchez getting ready. I couldn't do this right now. If I tried to be explosive once like these girls, I would be done for the day. Rowe going deep into the corner and broken up nicely on the play once again. Anything that is going deep. And Hayden Spano is doing it both at the quarterback position today and on the defensive side of the ball. That will bring us to halftime. Robinson Knights with a 6-0 lead as the teams will head off to a short break. Welcome back to Rolando Field, Nike headquarters here in Beaverton, Oregon. We're at the halftime getting set to start third quarter of play. Robinson leading 6-0 over their rival, Alonzo. And for a young quarterback in Hayden Spano, she's looking like a pretty good veteran right yeah, now. Yeah, coach, coach talked about how terrified she was around just the atmosphere and everything. She's been the most poised and special young quarterback on the field today. I'm excited to see what she has in the second half. She also did pretty good on defense, too, breaking up that last play before we went to halftime. So the third quarter getting underway between these two teams. Again, a historic day here on Nike's campus, the first time that they have ever had a flag football game girl style here on campus at all our football game for flag at any time. In Auburn history, Taylor Davis along with a special, special. Oh yes, my uh, fellow Auburn alum, Bo Jackson, here on the sidelines. He's been walking around checking out the game. He actually told me he thinks he might invest in a professional women's flag football team, the first of its kind. He's fired up as we are as well. But guys, I spoke with Alonzo head coach Matt Hernandez at the break. He said he's really impressed with his team's composure. He wants them to settle in just a bit more this second half. He wants to continue to take some deep shots and take advantage of fourth down. 
Yeah, it's definitely one of the issues that they have had just trying to settle in. And maybe a little bit too, Ryan, uh, you know, Robinson's in the same situation, but the last uh, 72 hours have been a little bit different than anything unique that they have had. Well, I just think, you know, you have to find a way to get over the nerves. Uh, they felt pretty loose before the game, right? They were all dancing and, and enjoying the atmosphere and stuff like that. But now we're kind of into a position where, you know, you got to start making plays, just like that. Great throw by Mika. Fitted in right in the middle of that zone. Number 24. Roe was telling us how much she just uh, is a rat at watching any type of film she possibly can. I said, yeah, do, you, do you spend time watching a lot of NFL games? She goes, no, I, you know, I just try to watch any type of games that I possibly can. I try to watch a lot of girls' games and a nice job and a reception right there at the sidelines. Great job of sitting in the pocket. No rush here. She is able to step up and then find a wide open receiver along the sideline who makes a great catch. Both quarterbacks doing a great job uh, throwing off balance, throwing away from the bodies. Well, Mika also talked to me before the game. Uh, surprisingly, you know, I'm, I, I'm certain Coach told who, who was going to be calling the game, and she talked to me about a few uh, Washington State passes, and I said, you weren't, you weren't even a thought in anybody's mind back then. What a great play here. And a nice job with a large, large pickup, Aaron Kloss, the four-year senior starter. Gets the big first down for Alonzo. This is their certainly their best series of the game. Great job of finding the opening and just going. The speed when they take off is, is incredibly impressive. What I want to see from this Alonzo team, and it's what happened to them in the first half, is they got stuck down in the red zone, wasn't able to convert and get any points. Matt Hernandez, head coach, wants them to get on the scoreboard, put themselves in a position to fight back here. Sadie Bodie short there. Rowe, here's Sturgis once again, and a nice job with the flag pull. Kami Sai picking up the flag. You know, again, I think I'm hammering this point, but their, their inability, their ability to to break themselves down, watch this, and make the tackle there. That is as form as you can be. You go right at the waist, you pull, you're never leading with your head, it's perfect. Rope under pressure, and on the board is Bodie with the catch. No, they say it's just short of the end zone. So it'll be fourth down for Alonzo. There's no blocking if you watch and look. See how close this is. Throws to the center right after the snap and gets pulled down. Oh, looks like the ball may have broke the plane before that flag came off. Well, uh, we'll see if they can convert here, and that will be a moot point. Fourth and goal. Roll. Goes short, and the grab is good. Nicely done. And Alonzo. Aaron Kloss with the reception for the score. Aaron's a big body right there. She, she just kind of basketballs him up. Watch this. As they kind of run option here, and she throws it right as she turns around and bodies her up and puts it right on the money. Makes a great catch to tie the game up. It's a big extra point here now. For Alonzo. Dual quarterbacks in there. Row. Up over the top and broken up on the play by who else? Peyton Spano. All over the field. The young sophomore now gets an opportunity with the tie game to see if they can respond on the offensive side of the football. So we are tied up at six. Wonderful job again by Hayden Spano going up, just using her length to knock the ball away. Spano also getting it done in the classroom where she has a 4.0 GPA. And oh yeah, by the way, she plays on the volleyball team where she is a libero. Yeah, that's where coach told us, uh, watched her on the volleyball court and went up to her and said, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna play some flag football. 
under pressure and unable to get the pass off as Elbody was there on the rush. Incomplete, second down. Wonderful job by the young sophomore, though, getting ready the getting ready the football. Um, first starting sophomore quarterback for the Robinson Knights since 2007, so 15 years. Nice job going up again. It was Robinson. Kate those long arms just gathering that ball in. 81 receptions a year ago. You can see why. I mean, just a, a tremendous job of her hands going up with that big wingspan. Uh, you know, she just is able to move everybody out of the way. First team all state in the last two years, 2021 and 2022. The duo together again, as you see Williams. The two differences between these teams, of course, are the defensive philosophies, right? Robinson likes to play cover two, which is a too high look, kind of really puts everything in front of you, where uh, Alonzo likes to play cover three, which you play off coverage. And if you're able to use Robinson like this, about 10 or 12 yards down the football field, if, if, if Spano is willing to just take that every single time, they can make their way down the field doing the same thing. Spano. Once again, trying to connect with Robinson, and they do. Right now, it's just kind of taking candy from a baby. <laughs> There's the response from the safety in the corner really isn't. They're stepping. They're not stepping in front of Robinson because she's just so big, and she's at her ability to reach up and catch any ball, no matter where it's been, has been huge. Robinson already with five receptions, over 108 yards. She hit over 1,200 yards a year ago. On first down. Ortiz unable to turn around and grab that ball. Kloss was there close on the play. I'll bring up second down. If I'm Coach Sanders here, uh, I'm, I'm going right back to Robinson. Every single time until they stop it. That's, that's just, as an offensive coordinator sometimes, you don't have to overthink it, you just, Keep doing what's getting you going. Spano, a little bit of time, a little floater over the top. Williams, Whoa. catch. Look at that. Oh, move. they fell oh, off. Oh, she lost her <laughs> Wow. Bo Jackson would be impressed with that. It reminded me a lot of Barry Sanders, a little shifty there. Watch this. Now they bring two rushers, so Spano's very smart to find the outlet. And watch this move. Flag falls off as she makes it. She, she, faked everybody out. She moved so fast, she knocked off her own flag. Adriana Williams, a great play there. She sets back up short. Spano, this time to the outside, and unfortunately unable to hold on to Tammy Jerson. Fourth down here for Robinson. See what Jess Anders has in his Playbook as they are quickly back under center. Spano. Perfect. Money. Do it every time. You just can't be stopped. When you play that cover three, there's a cushion out there. When you have a receiver as good as Robinson, she just gets to her depth, stops, and turns, and the defender can can do nothing but go through the body of the wide receiver. And Spano's just been so accurate with her throws today that it's it's. I wish I would have had off it. Quarter action between Alonzo and Robinson here from the Nike campus. Girls high school flag football as first down for Robinson. Spano rolling out. Nice job in rolling on the reception. Spano pass, completely number 26, Bella Rodriguez. Bella Rodriguez. I can't get over just how a great a job these wide receivers are doing at catching the football. I mean, we haven't seen the ball drop that often. We haven't seen the ball hit the ground. Seven on seven is supposed to be like that anytime you watch it in college in the NFL, but you know, at this level, they've been incredibly impressive, especially in a game where there was a lot of pressure, I think, and a lot of, a lot of eyeballs uh, and expectations on these teams. Rodriguez was open once again after that snap just for a minute, but Spano's eyes went to a different direction. Sometimes when you have a receiver such as such as, as Robinson, who's so good, you sometimes, 
narrow that focus. And, and sure enough, in the flat, there was a wide open receiver that could have walked in for six. I'm sure Coach will have that reminder for Spano when she gets to the sideline. Good crowd on hand here this afternoon on Nike's campus here in Beaverton, Oregon. Short snap. Did it work on third down? It certainly did. And Adriana Williams with the score as Robinson takes the lead. Right now, it's really kind of come down to who can run the ball better in these short yardage situations. You know, you're not normally used to it. She's able to get the ball across the line before the flag is pulled. And the referee gets his two arms up in the air for a touchdown. Puts him up by six here early in the first quarter in the fourth quarter. Williams is isolated up top. Spano with the short pass, and it doesn't work. Broken up. 12 6. A little trickery there, a little double pass. Spano lines up on the outside there, backward lateral, and she's had a couple options. Here's the defensive play here to knock that ball away, stop them from getting that big point that could come into play really here at the end. Seven minutes, 40 seconds, of course, ticking away. Alonzo's got to get going. This will probably be their last opportunity to have the ball offensively. Absolutely, the clock moving. Let's see what type of pace Alonzo works to head downfield. Keep an eye on Sturgis. On the outside is Rowe, rolls out, and it's picked off. No, she was out of bounds. A nice job there by Logan. I think she was even surprised that uh, she had such an open opportunity for that ball. Wow. What's the rules on uh, one or two feet? Did she have possession, too, That's the question, right? right? Great job, good defense of getting over the top. That's what the cover two safety does on the short side of the field, able to get over and fit that pocket really well. Mika Rowe, nice job, a little short pass over the middle to Julia Sanchez Rose for the reception. Moving on upfield. Crowd is starting to fill in nicely here at the Nike campus. If I'm Matt Hernandez right here, I'm going to go to where the, the defense is most vulnerable, and that's right over the middle of the field. So right now, you'll be looking towards the O on the bow nose emblem during the middle of the field. That's the best place to take advantage some way, somehow. Use the inside slot receiver or maybe right down the middle with the center. Second down. Row to Bodie. Sadie Bodie doing a nice job giving the Ravens just a little bit of breathing room. All right, got two plays to get 10 yards. Key is they have to get to the 40. Keep the play alive here on third down. Row under pressure. It's really difficult when you're do, when you're running any out breaking routes into a cover two corner, right? The, the, that's their job. They just they let somebody go by. They know they have help over the top, and these corners playing in this defense are doing a tremendous job of just kind of allowing these wide receivers to run into these spots. Like I said, you know the most vulnerable right now is right over the middle of the field, in between those two safeties, if they can get over the linebackers. The the question is is whether these linebackers stay at this depth because it makes it very difficult. I'd utilize the center in this one. The center rarely gets looked at because uh, she's snapping the football, but she is eligible, and she is an eligible receiver down the field. Fourth down, they've got to get to the 40. They go to Bodie. Just short. The clock is running, and now everything is in favor of Robinson here. They have control of the clock. They have control of the score. Alonzo will need to be aggressive defensively. Let's see what uh, the Knights do here with their offensive set. And of course, if I'm the Robinson coach here, I'm just I'm milking that clock, right? Absolutely. There's no there's no need to run that fast-paced offense right now. It's a it's a matter of watching the, 
the zero show up on the scoreboard and them raising their hands in victory. Aiden Spano on the run. With a gain of about four on the play. Probably using my timeouts right now if I'm Matt Hernandez. You want to secure as much clock as you can with it running at all times. And there's some very precious seconds clicking off that clock right now. Smart on Robinson's effort there to run the football. Josh Saunders, head coach for 16 years, 216 wins, 28 losses, seven times state champion. What a grab! And a big job on the play. Let's look at this one, Ryan. A tremendous job of going up. See how high she goes at the catches at the ball, the highest point. Kenneth Sturgis shattered all kind of records in her freshman year. She also plays on the softball team and watching her run. Ryan, have you ever played with, with uh, a receiver that just kind of does everything effort effortlessly, whether it's running the ball, catching the ball, and just making it look easy? That's her. <laughs> That's her. Right? I had plenty of that. She's I, that girl. I played with Joey Galloway in Dallas, and he was exactly that type of guy. Could just run like the wind and looked effortless in doing it. Julia Sanchez can't hold on. Clock is still moving. What a great play on the defensive side of the football. You don't want Spano making that kind of throw in that situation. That's the young sophomore will learn from that. But now Alonzo needs to make some big plays. Oh, broken up on the play by Spano. Sturgis. Unable to hold on to. We have to pick a player of the game. I think Spano is going to be. She's going to be right there, at, right the, there. at the top on both sides of the football. But if I'm Matt Hernandez right now, like I said, I mean, you, you have to take a shot down the middle of the field some way. Put some pressure on one of those safeties with a couple receivers. It's, I know it's difficult for the quarterback to hold the ball. Great defense. Contact there on the play, but no flag. Lily Ortiz. Cammy Sy there with the defensive stop. Gets her hand in the way. Timeout for Alonzo here, setting up this fourth down and 15. Let's get that clock operator to use his thumb there on the stop button. <laughs> Matt Hernandez is right. not going to be liking that right no. there. The clock is reset from 132, but it really doesn't matter if they're not able to convert this fourth down. And when you're playing this kind of defense, this is not a defense um, if you're an offensive team that you want to see in a situation like this, right? Where you're, you know, they're sitting back there allowing everything to stay in front of them. And Mika Rowe is going to have to, to take a chance here. She's going to have to get the ball down the field. She cannot check it down and hope that their player makes a play and gets to the first down mark. Row. Long one over the middle, and it's picked off. And we'll be taken back to the house. No, but deep into territory is Clay Robinson. And that should wrap this one one up for the Knights. Mika Rowe had to take a chance down the football field. Unfortunately, the wide receiver gets held up a little bit underneath that safety. And of course, Robinson, Johnny on the spot. Sure hands as she is, makes the interception and almost gets it into the end zone for a pick six. And that should do it. That's seven INTs last season. And a big one here today on Nike's campus. All smiles with under 40 seconds to go now in this game. Spano rolling out. Eight Spano on the quarterback, Eber. with the flag. Now by number two, Ella Bodie. Lonza uses her second timeout. Spano will take 
take a knee. And that will wrap this one up. And it's Robinson, the Knights, winning the kickoff classic. 12-6 over Alonzo.